Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here, and today I want to take you through a short video um, on how to paint, digitally paint in Photoshop, uh, but you can do this in Procreate as well, um, how to paint a breaking wave. I just want to show you something pretty simple. I thought we would take a little while and just go through the process and, uh, and explain kind of what I've learned about water and reflections and the changing facets of a wave and all that kind of stuff. So why don't we go ahead and just dive in. I, uh, I want to start, first of all, by toning my canvas. I always like to start with a toned canvas. <clears throat> and um, uh, just so I don't have, I can get rid of that white. And uh, white is very stark. It's very, uh, um, you know, just, uh, it's, it's, it's so bright that everything else that you put down uh, feels like it's too dark. And so I like to start with a mid-tone so I can gauge my lights and my darks. So let's go ahead and just start to sketch. I want to sketch the top of the wave first. So let's just sketch the top of the wave. Okay, there's the top. Just like that. And as it comes down, you know, we, we have this shape, right? About like that. If we're doing the cross section, remember that you know it comes up like that. And it's gonna to start to curl over. So this is a wave that's coming out at an angle. So this part of the wave over here is closer to shore than this part. So it's breaking over here. And this is the wave, the lip of the wave kind of coming down and around. And it kind of folds over like this, right? That's the shape. We've got a lot of you know, flat water in here, like so, okay? And then in here, let me shrink this up a little bit. Let's do that. So then in here, it's really starting to break up. And we're starting to get a lot of like crashing foam and spray and everything. Okay, so that we're just gonna we're just drawing it first, and maybe it, it's hitting the the bottom here. This is where it starts to hit, and it starts to kind of break up right in here. It's breaking up along the edge, just like that. Maybe it's a little uneven. All of this, this water, you know, crashing and breaking, and, and it's sitting, going right into the, right into the water, right there. That's the surface of the water. Crash, boom, right there. So that's the drawing of our wave. Now this is a wave that's going to be lit from kind of behind us and over to the left. It's not a backlit wave. Backlit waves, you can see the light through them, and I'm going to do that on a different on a different video. Today, I just want to show you kind of the thinking of you know how to think about a wave as it's breaking. Let's go ahead and crop this. There we go. That feels better. Okay. Let's get the. I want to get all the angles right. Okay, the, obviously the surface of the water is uneven. You got little ripples and all kinds of stuff. And here the water is kind of peaking, it comes up to a point, and then it starts to fall over. And as the wave is moving forward, it's throwing off little bits of spray, right? You know, as it moves. It's going to throw, especially if there's an offshore wind. The offshore wind always kind of throws a spray. The, the, uh, the wind accelerates up the face of the wave and causes the spray to come off, which is kind of cool. So we got a, a very rough drawing right now. And so we're thinking about that shape, always thinking about that shape. Now this area in here, we're going to get a lot of reflection of the sky in here. But as we move up the face of this wave, 
We're going to get less and less of the sky. We're going to get a little bit of actually even some of the beach maybe. Sometimes it's just a color. We're not actually going to see the beach reflected in there. That's not what I'm saying. But it's going to get darker. Okay. And in some instances, like I said, when the light is behind, you're going to see through the wave. But we're going to see more into the water at that angle. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new layer underneath. And I am going to, let's just lay in some color. Like I said, we're going to get some of the sky on the bottom. So let's lay that in first. Let's lay that in first there, here. I've got, you know what, let's just, let's do it with, um, because not all of you have the brushes that I'm using. I want to show you, you can just do it with standard brushes. So I'm just going to use a just standard brush, hard round standard brush. Okay. The only adjustment I'm going to make is I'm going to pull the spacing together a little better. There we go. That feels pretty good. Now let's go a little darker, a little deeper blue, and maybe a little darker for. Um, actually, I'm going to put a layer behind. For behind, we'll just color it in behind. All right, just laying in color really quick. So there's the ocean behind. Okay. Now I want to get a, a few variations in here. I'm going to grab that color again. I want to get a few variations. So let's turn on. Oh, we've already got that on. That's good. So I'm going to turn uh, the, that sensitivity off there. Oh, i got to get on the top layer. There we go. So there's the layer right there. And I just want to get some variations. I'm going to knock the uh, opacity back a little bit. There, see that? Just getting some variations in the water. Maybe go a little go a little greener with it. You know, as we get into the foreground, as the water gets more shallow, it tends to go a little green sometimes, depending on the color of the sand. And in this case, I do want to go a little bit greener and a little darker in the wave here. So I'm just I'm gonna actually let's knock this back up to hundred percent. Just quickly doing some drawing, just coloring in, just using a standard round brush. That's all I'm doing. Okay, just use a standard round brush. You don't need any special brushes. That's what I want to show you. You don't need any special brushes. We'll do this whole painting actually. Let's do this whole painting in just a round brush. That way you don't have to blame it on the not having the right brush. I'm going to come back and grab some of this blue again and kind of work it up. want this nice gradual kind of gradation, right? Grab that green again. Now what I'm doing is I'm just, I'm kind of put the, uh, the tapering on it, the tapering sensitivity, and I'm just kind of working in some of these shapes coming down in here. Okay, <clears throat> now I want to grab this color. Now that we've got that, actually, let's keep it like that, all right? Now let's go into here. The, as the wave turns over, as it curls, you're getting a lot of water mixed in there. It's, it's reflecting back a lot of uh, brightness. And so it's going to be kind of washed out. We're getting a lot of bubbles and 
it's breaking up quite a bit. So this is all going to get really washed out all through in here. Let me knock this back up again. There we go. Somewhere in that, in that range. Let's do that. Okay. And keep this really simple. All right. And I'm just going to bring it down to about in here because we're going to let that fade into some lighter color. There we go. Maybe a little bit in here along the top. Okay. There. Let's go a little darker. And I'm going to lock that. I'm going to alpha lock that edge. And I just want to just darken the top here. Once again, let me go in here and pull that spacing a little closer so it's a smoother look. And what I've done here on that layer, once again, I've alpha locked. I've hit the lock. And what that's doing is it's enabling me to uh, draw on here fairly loosely, but not go outside the, the layer that I've already drawn on. It doesn't go outside the pixels that have been colored. Okay, I just want to darken that a little bit. Now I want to come in and I want to grab, go a little cooler and right in here, kind of a, not quite white, get right in there. I want to turn off the alpha lock because I want to be able to paint more now. I'm just going to come in here once again loosely at 100%. Come in, hit my uh, taper sensitivity there. So the harder I press, the wider the line, and if I'm light with it, it, it creates a, a smaller line. So I'm just coming in and hitting along the edges here, okay? And I'll go back and forth. We knock that opacity down. Look how loose we're being, and already it's starting to look and feel like a crashing wave, right? We knock this back up to 100%. We're just going to just really quickly lay this in. Now, I know it looks bright white right now, but remember, look how much more white we have to go. It's, it, it is pretty, you know, quite a ways up close to white, but it's not white yet. We have a lot of range we can go. Oops. We still have quite a bit more white we can do, and we will be doing that. You'll see. Okay, so now that I've kind of got this roughly laid in just very roughly laid in like so maybe even a little bit of we knock this opacity way down maybe even just a little bit of spray mist coming up like so yeah that okay keeping it super simple no special brushes now let's turn off our drawing layer look what we got we've got already something that's looking pretty cool right I want to go in and just add a little bit of detail of shr shrinking up my brush using the same brush but I'm just now I, I've turned on my pressure sensitivity for the tapering and we're just going to create you know, some of the water droplets right really quickly breaking up the um, the, uh, the edges
Look at that. That's pretty cool. Man, so much fun. So, you know, the, the reason I know how to do all this is, you know, observations from a lifetime of looking at this kind of stuff. You know, nature in general. If you want to be an artist, be a student of nature. Be a student of the world around you. And find out why things are the way they are. Understand it. And it'll help you with your art always. So I'm going to I'm going to not kind of do all the dots over the uh, over this part because we got some rendering we want to do in here and then uh, we'll put water droplets over the top of it as a kind of a finishing touch. Okay? I just want to shore up some of these edges a little bit. There. That's cool. So now let's go back in. Let's add some details. I'm going to go, I'm going to add a layer on top just because I want to, um, I want to be able to go in and separate these details out. Let's start in the foreground. And I'm going to grab some of the color here. And I want to go a little darker. And this is going to be catching, this is, you know, the ripples. Um, we're seeing the front side of the ripples turn towards us a little bit. So they're going to be reflecting back some darker parts of the sky. And so here, just coming in, loosely hitting all that, trying to stay, keep the line direction correct. Let me get a little thicker. The key is to make it feel, you know, um, organic, but controlled. See there? Keeping everything consistent in the right direction. Thinking about these as little mini, really kind of flat little mini waves in the in the uh, break zone. Now this water, if you look at the color of the water itself, you know, churned up with sand and everything, the water itself is going to have a, kind of a warm tone to it, a warm tint. And so that's going to lend itself, that's going to affect some of the uh, reflections. And so what I mean by that is, let's grab some of this color, the white that we have here, and let's go into a warmer zone down here and make it a little grayer. Like so. Actually, let me do that again. I'm going to go a little grayer, a little warmer, and a little darker. Okay? So now what I want to do is I know that the water here, let's go a little bit brighter. The water here This is all getting reflected. All of this. Except when you get up into here, then it gets a little dark. But this is all reflection right here. Until we get down to our ripples, right? Go a little smaller with the brush. There. I'm going to get some reflections in here of the wave. All of this.
and it's going to work its way up reflections in here all with one brush we're doing this with one brush we're going to keep it simple no magic brushes today Just hitting some reflections, all of this foam and breakwater is getting reflected into this foreground water. All right, we'll just keep working that. Cool. So let's put that aside for a little bit. I want to grab our green color over here in the wave. And I want to go a little warmer with it and a little darker over here. And I want to just create some shapes coming down like this. Just being very kind of spontaneous with the line work. Some of the shapes will get kind of big. Okay, so what we're doing, you know, if you really think about what I've done is I'm just starting with broad shapes, right? We're starting broad with those kind of laying in the color, in that first initial drawing. And then we start going towards the detail. We're pushing the, the range of value, meaning light and dark. I'm thinking about color temperature. There. I'll let all this get a little bit dark up here as it's curling over. keeping it really simple as far as how we're doing this. At some point, some of this water is going to be actually reflecting the sun, little glistens of sunlight on there as well. And that'll be right along in here because our sun is, you know, the, the plane of the water is going to be perpendicular to the um, the, the light source, the reflection, the, the sparkles, would be per perpendicular to the light source. So now I just want to kind of fill this in. Get a little smooth areas in here. There, that's feeling pretty good. And as the water gets a little thinner, as it curls over, it's going to get a little, it won't be as dark. It's going to, you know, we're going to see light coming through. And then it gets dark in here because it's casting a shadow on itself. Right in here. Just like that. Now we're going to get darker still. 
right now I'm just kind of working my way our way in here creating this shadow <clears throat> See, already it's starting to get a little bit of depth to it. Get a little shadow underneath there where it's hitting the water. And it's going to cast a shadow in here. Water can cast a shadow on itself. Just like that. So now it really feels like that it's actually making contact with the water. And then we have a little bit of kind of just darkness and the reflections. Like I said, we are going to go a little, we're going to go darker. There. That's looking pretty cool. So let's grab, I want to go and get a little darker blue in here. Kind of blue, 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 blue. Really blue. And I'm going into some of these areas here where it's going to reflect back some of the darker parts of the sky. And it's mixing also with some of the darker parts of the water. There, that feels pretty good. All right, let's go darker. I'm going to grab this our, our dark green again. I'm going to get really kind of dark with it. Let's just get dark down under the wave. Don't be afraid to push that range, that value range. I also want to define some of these edges on the wave. Let's take the knock the opacity down a bit. I want to be able to have a little bit more control. Get into some blue here. There.
Let's bring the opacity back up. There. That's feeling good. And so the, the key now is I'm just kind of throwing in variations of value and color between the green and the blue up in here. And I think I want to get a little bit of So let's go a little bit lighter than that. There. Just getting a little bit of variation of color in there. And then I want to grab our original color down here, and I want that to kind of work its way. We're kind of working our way away from the reflection. So I just want to, and what I mean by that is as the plane changes, we're going to be seeing less and less of this blue, but it has to go in like ripples. You can see here, come you know, we get less and less of it, and then eventually it just goes right up into the wave. Just like so. There, okay. Just like that. And we're going to grab our wave color, go a little bit darker and warmer with it. Get some of that in here. Look at this wave coming along. It's pretty cool. We still haven't pushed our big range yet. I'm going to go a little darker in here and in some of these areas on the wave itself I'm going to add like a shadow area like maybe the, the wave itself is going into a little bit of shadow let's knock the opacity down like that get a little shadow underneath maybe some back here it gives it a little volume see here I want this to have a little bit of thickness to the wave right here so you're seeing you know the volume of the water kind of curling over now let's go ahead and grab the original that white that we started with and let's just go a little warmer and a little bit brighter with it let's knock our opacity up to 100 percent and I want to go through and just kind of hit some little details here 
We're going to get little details along the edge. We're still not all the way, you know, 100% white. But you'll see as we go along the edge here, now we've got room to go a little brighter. I want to show a little thickness to this wave. Got some spray coming off. There we go. Once again, we're just doing this with a normal round brush. We don't need magical brushes to do good paintings. Now, I like to use special brushes to, to create certain effects and shortcuts here and there. But when it comes to understanding and just kind of painting, you know, it's, I recommend that it's best to learn with simple brushes and understand what it is that you're doing then you can get into the special brushes. There, look at that. Doing it kind of tastefully, you know. You don't want to put too much in there. Maybe the water's kind of breaking up a little bit as it falls. <clears throat> Actually, before I get too far into that, I like where we're going with this, but one of the things I want to do is I, I want to get this part of the, the kind of the curling wave uh, worked out. So I'm just going to add a little bit more definition in here. A little bit of variation in the color. gets lighter as we get closer to the foam. Notice how it's basically the same value as we get closer in there. There we go. I'm actually going to make it even warmer. Let's make it, let's put it like it's getting a little bit of sand in it. warmth just some slight warmth in that water there that's feeling pretty good here. There. So you can start to feel that thickness in the water up here. So let's take some of that. Let's just start to break this up and here as well. There. It starts to give it a little bit more character. And you're going to start to feel that water breaking up. 
work a little bit bigger here for you. There, okay. So now let's go back to our, our lighter color. Go a little warmer with it. Okay, now let's just start going in and well, notice how we're doing this all on, you know, basically the same layer too, just above our initial layer. Just above the initial color we laid in. I'm going to knock the opacity up on that. changing the temperature just a touch. There we go. See they're getting all that. Whoops. Getting all the spray in there. Just using my brush just to hit little dots here and there, little bits of spray. Just like that. Just kind of I knocked the I took the uh, the tapering sensitivity off, and I'm just going in and hitting some of these brighter areas, and then we'll go back in with the the water droplets and punch it up. Oh, excuse me. There we go. There. So you can see we had as white as that looked. Look how much brighter this is. We still have room to go brighter even. Making the brush a little smaller so I can get a little more detail in the breaking water. There, see that? Now let's come back with our pressure sensitivity on the tapering. Now we can come back in and hit some droplets.
There we go. See how we're starting to really get some depth in this now? And this is just takes a you know, this is a little time consuming getting all these drops and everything in here. Once again, you could probably build a brush that splatters, do a splatter brush. But I want to show you how to do this just all traditional. One brush, just one single round brush. I want you to see the imagery you can create. Everybody gets all hung up on the brushes. What kind of brush is that? And all that. Well, this is just a simple little round brush. here get some more drops of water where we were hitting it before look at that it's really starting to come together now huh kind of jump around getting along the edges here now And what's interesting is you can get these water droplets to read over the dark parts of the water, right? See that? Because some of them, you know, will be in, in sunlight in front of the shadow areas. So think about that. And that really creates depth. There we go. Let's get some water droplets up a little higher. It's all about paying attention to your values and your and your temperature. Values and temperature. Values and temperature. Lots of dots. Kind of a stipple. Just get in there and make dots. <laughs> but see how it sits nice and bright over that. It looks gray now compared to the, the white that we thought we were, you know, it felt kind of white when we put it in. But now look how gray it looks by putting brighter white over the top of it. All right, so I want to get some of the I want to get a little temperature change in here. I'm going to take a break from the from all of that and I want to get a little bit of a temperature change. Right in here. I want it to feel like we're getting a little bit more sand stirred up in here.
right into the shadow area. Good. Get a little bit of this color here. I'm just going to lay a little bit in here as well. Break up this foreground. Foreground water. carry some of this warm color over. I'm just going to act like a little bit of a reflection of some of the water that's breaking up up top as well. subtle with the color changes. Not super happy with our colors in here. I want to go I want to get some of these pulled together a little bit. There we go. Feels a little better. deeper green knock this all the way back up. Just bring some of this warmer green, darker green down into the, the foreground as well. It kind of unifies it a little better. through a little bit but that green feels better to me feels like we're getting some better depth yeah we still let a little bit of the blue show through but now that green really kind of pulls it all together
So now I'm just kind of going through and hitting little details along the surface of the water. I want to get a little slightly darker ripples in here. There, look at that. Getting that baby to pop now. Where we started as a very simple, very simple laying in of the of the basic colors, and then we just started breaking it up a little bit. You take your time. Take your time. I'm going to go a little cooler with it. There. Now we can get back to our darks up here. Because what we're going to do is we're going to lay in some really good sparkle color. You know, I already told you we have to reflect back the, the sunlight. We're going to reflect back some of that sunlight. So I'm working up towards it here. Look at that. Don't labor it. It's getting long strokes. There we go. A little bit of foam on the water here. You just get kind of irregular with the with how you lay it in, and it just comes out like looking like foam. And we'll throw in the, some brighter values in here. Look at that, we got foam. There we go. Now, let's go, let's get really warm, warm, hot yellow and go just almost pure white with it. And we're gonna go in, actually before we do that, <laughs> Sorry. I want to grab some of the color here. I want to hit some foam here too.
There we go. Okay, so now let's get some yellow and go really super bright. And we're going to use, and I, I'm going to put these on a different layer just in case it doesn't work. I want to hit. Some bright sparkles. Right along here, this is where the, the water is kind of perpendicular to the light source. So this is where you'll get sparkles on the water. We basically are at pure white now. We worked our way up to it. There we go. See that? Woo! I love that. These little sparkles here. Oh, that man! That looks. That feels pretty good. feels wet. Yeah, there we go. Can't go too far over because the wave is curling over. So it's losing the light source. And we'll get some little sparkles off the foam off the peak up here might even be some bright areas along in here Even brighter. Even brighter. Go as bright as we possibly can go now. really coming together it's a curling wave look at that all just thinking about the logic of lighting temperature water reflections the ripples how all that works you can make a wave playing with value making sure your value structure is right don't go too bright too fast So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock this back a little bit. And just like we did earlier, I'm going to hit some areas here with a broader brush. And then I'll break them up. Yeah, 
Let's try this. I'm going to take off the uh, pressure sensitivity on the opacity and then just try just so it comes out completely opaque and bright white. Yeah, see that? Bingo! Bingo, bango, bongo. Look at that. This is where we get it to pop. There we go. So just want to get in here and just break all this up as much as possible with little water droplets. Once again, we did this all with one brush, just a round brush. You don't need a lot of special crazy brushes. Now we're going to do one other thing after we get all this. We're going to do a couple of other things, but after we get all this in here like this, I want to grab some of this color now, some of the gray, and let some of the droplets carry into, whoops, I don't want it to be super opaque. Let some of the droplets carry into the white areas. Like so. Because some of those droplets are a little bit darker. There we go. Good. So now I want to come in and I'm going to go into our reflection. Let's go a little brighter. And some of these bright areas, we're just going to add them to the reflection. Get it to pop a little bit. Get a little view in there. There we go. Yeah, look at that. It feels like we got reflections of the foam or the breaking water. See there? Pretty cool. So here I just want to go, I want to grab some of this darker blue and just add a little bit of it so it's not just so isolated in one area. Because I do like that color. 
It just wasn't right where we had it. There. Look at that wave. I'm going to hit some of this foreground texture. Coming into the home stretch. Let's go a little bit brighter on some of these blues. Just want to break that up a little bit. There we go. Now, um, there's some of that bright white. We have to hit hit the foam. I got to make the foam. Getting some brightness in there. balance it out There we go. So now what I want to do, I want to go behind the big wave and just add a little bit of a little bit of uh, wave texture back here. Go a little bit darker than that. Make sure I'm staying horizontal. I'm just creating underneath the layer just some wave textures. Ripple textures.
better yet, we can drop our horizon line down. Uh, still feels like it should be our horizon is off the off the frame. Just kind of laying in some darkness back there first. I feel like I want to get a little bit of, let me go a little bluer with it. just throwing in like little streaks that'll help because I wasn't liking that texture there I just want to show little streaks in there now let's try it again I'm gonna be a little bolder with it this time That's better. So you can always go back and fix it. Just doing quick strokes, getting that water texture in here. Now what I want to do is I want to get my gradient tool and just do a gradient from the top down. Like that. And now, grab some of that lighter color and just lightly hit the tops of some of these foreground waves. Well, not foreground, but closer in. Water textures. There. And so I don't want to draw any attention really to the back. The attention should be on the wave itself. There we go. That's about all we need. And then in the bottom, I think we should need to have a little bit of the color of the water getting a little lighter in right here. There. That's better. And then a little bit more of the foam. The foam color. Put 
like that right up on top. There we go. You keep it loose. There, I get a little bit more foam right here. That is how we paint water and a wave, a crashing wave. That was fun. We're going to do more of these. If you want to see more painting lessons and, uh, you know, drawing lessons, animation lessons, all kinds of stuff, go on over to my website, creatureartteacher.com. I've got so much stuff over there. CreatureArtTeacher.com and uh, you'll find pretty much everything you need, whatever you're interested in. We've got it. We've got character design and digital painting and animation and all kinds of fun stuff. So here we go. There it is. A crashing wave done in Photoshop. So I hope you enjoyed that. I really had a great time. Um, we got one last thing to do, and that is. I hope you do it on your end too is sign it there we go so there it is there's our crashing wave and uh, that was a lot of fun so remember you just start with those values think about where what's reflecting think about when you're looking into the water um, and you know the when there's you have the white of the foam remember that it's not bright white right away you want to get into that very slowly work towards the, each end of the spectrum as far as your value structure goes you work towards the darks a little bit and you work towards the lights and you keep coming back and forth and get that range of temperature in your color as well all right so i hope you had a great time i hope you learned something go on out there put some beauty back into the world and i'll talk to you next time thanks